Hello everyone, it's Ashwin Rao. I hope you're all doing well today and this video unboxing brings you a brand that has become increasingly recognized for its skill in hand welted handmade shoes. This is a brand that now competes with the very highest end of welted men's footwear. This is a brand that has been growing its skill set and is a collaboration between a husband and wife pair based out of China collaborating with Sons of Henry. This is October 10th. The model that I will be unboxing today is their Gurkha monk strap shoe in a deerskin hash grain leather. I'm incredibly excited to bring you this video and we're gonna go through the unboxing and first look of this shoe in the coming segments. The October 10th box is a utilitarian yet beautifully crafted box and I usually don't pay much attention to a box on unboxing. As you can see it's a fairly austere looking box. It has this more red colored grain on either side and otherwise has a fairly symmetric look. Now, the box is actually magnetized. I've never seen that before, but it has magnetic latches, which you can't see, that fasten the shoe and make it a really elegant, beautifully constructed and designed box. You can also see that the box has some play here and here to allow for some flexibility, which I think overall lends to a really beautiful design. The rest of the packaging is pretty straightforward, so we're gonna speed this up and get to the unboxing. I wanted to take you through my first impressions of the October 10th Gurkha Monk strap. The shoe features October 10th's new K last, which is a sharp, soft square last with a fairly elongated profile. The last also features a slight chisel or taper to that nose right there, which I think adds to the beauty and character of this particular design. The last also seems to have a medium instep and a, and a reasonable amount of arch support built in to the shape of that last. Going to this shoe, you can see this hatch grain leather, which has both natural characteristics coming from the actual hide of the deer and its aging process throughout its life, coupled with the embossed hatch grain pattern. This is reminiscent to me of some of the pictures that I've seen of the original Russian reindeer hatch grain leather. So you can see that there's some elements where the shoe appears to have maybe a looser grain. I'm not sure if that's really fair to say or not, but definitely I see that on this pair and not so much on the other pair where there's a cleaner pattern here. I think color is a mid orange brown colored shoe that I think is really nice and should be fairly versatile in a wardrobe. This has a seamless heel pattern. Seamless heels, as you probably discovered in my show, are a characteristic of very high-end shoemaking because it takes a little bit more effort to properly last and create a pattern that holds a seamless heel well. You can see slight strain marks here on the backside of the heel, very subtle. Um, and I would not have paid any attention to that. But again, I think that that's something worth paying note to when you're considering your options for purchasing. You can also see the shape of this last from the backside is slightly asymmetric, which I really like. I love asymmetry in lasts and shoes because it tends to create more of an organic profile on your foot. Here you see the heel block, which has a beautiful, elegant taper, which is neatly fitted to the upper. So there's a very clean line that continues to taper from the curve of the upper, which is absolutely stunningly done. You can see from the side of the shoe that that taper is a 270 degree taper with a slight pitch here, as well as a slight pitch to the heel. And you also see if I pull the shoe in, an offset between the heel block and this beveled edge to the waist of the shoe. Speaking of the base of the shoe, right from this viewpoint, you can see the Vibram Toppy and the Triumph toe plate and this beautiful, elegant, slight fiddleback waist. Um, you see that it's actually a fairly beveled edge to that top of the fiddleback. So it's got a nice gentle fiddleback that really suits this shoe very, very well. I like the choice of this piano black finish to the waist, which I think complements the upper really well by providing some contrast. I personally chose to use a Vibram toppy 
and a Triumph toe plate. Otherwise, the entire shoe would have been finished with this particular dressing. Most uh, double monk styles either have a sweeping profile that leads to the back or a straight or backwards swooping curve. And this forward swooping facing curve really adds a unique style and flair that should stand out well in my collection as well as on my feet. The two buckles to this monk flare out a little bit, which is unique and come to more of a point than a square edge that separates the two. This is a more narrow monk strap apron right here and the stitch density here is quite high and I love the choice of color on the stitching. It's almost a uh, mid to dark brown stitching that complements the color of the upper very well. The stitching has a very high stitch density, somewhere between probably 10 and 12 stitches per inch. You can see the beveling done to create a softness to the edge of this waist and that gentle fiddle back as we talked about. And on the inside of the shoe also that soft beveled edge. I also wanted to show you the details of this lasted shoe tree which has your traditional hinge and compression spring. This is a lasted shoe tree with a high shine finish that fits the shoe well and really features and showcases the design and style of this K-Last and a fairly narrow, sharp shape to that last. I'm really loving the quality and finish of this high gloss shoe tree. Well worth getting a pair of shoe trees if you're gonna invest in this pair of shoes because it will keep the shape of this shoe very well. Here you see the half in leather insole with the October 10th branding, collaboration with Sons of Henry. Here you see the inset, which has the K-Last marked in my size UK9 with a white contrast stitching. You also see this rough out back heel cup, which should prevent heel slippage, which is particularly important for a monk strap shoe where you're relying on the shape of the shoe to fit almost perfectly so there's no heel slip. I'm incredibly impressed by what I'm seeing from October 10th. Now, aren't they at the level of Acme Shoemaker? At the very least, they're very close. And the value proposition is really hard to argue with at the highest end of the men's footwear segment. This is Ashwin Rao. I hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you soon.